All right, what's up guys? So in this video, we're gonna show you how true Unix chads do their references and bibliographies in documents all automatically without any of the effort. Uh, now, if you've seen my channel before, you of course know that I've done videos on LaTeX um, where you can automatically do references very simply just by having a bibliography file and using something like Bibber. But if you saw my last video, I compared Bibber with what is called Refer. Now, Refer, I should say, is a what's called a preprocessor for Groff. Now, Refer and Groff, they're usually part of like a base devel package on your on your any Unix based operating system. So chances are you probably already have these, um, but they are a highly minimal way of getting citations uh, citations and references in your document. You can check out my last video where I compared them to LaTeX, and needless to say, they're much quicker, much much more efficient. But in this video, I'm actually going to talk about how to use Refer. Okay, so anyway, um, now the very basics, What in this video we're gonna really just put in references into this document just to show you how it works. Um, now in order to first prepare your references, you're gonna wanna have some kind of bibliography database. Now that could be a database of one resource or it could be a database of a gajillion resources. I'll go ahead and pull mine up here. So uh, this is my bibliography file. I actually converted it a little bit ago. So, so on my right here, this is my bibliography file for LaTeX. I've been building this up for like years as I cite things, I'll put them in here and I'll never have to worry about them again because LaTeX will format them automatically. Um, but the same thing is true with Groff and Refer. Uh, really all I did is I converted the document on the right to the document on the left. It's not actually totally converted, but mostly um, done. Now let's go ahead and look at the formatting of this. Uh, so each of these paragraphs is a separate reference, so a separate source, maybe a book, maybe an article, maybe an article in a book or something like that. And you'll notice that all of the metadata is sort of tagged here. So for example, the, um, I was about to say artist, the author is tagged in capital A, the title is in capital T, the book, if it's an article in a book, is tagged with capital B, uh, you'll see the editor is tagged in E, uh, publisher and I, uh, et cetera, et cetera. If you wanna see all this information, you can just go to the refer uh, man page and it'll actually list out a little bit down here, all the different metadata you can give it. But needless to say, you can pretty much uh, give all the stuff that you need in this file and that's really all you need to set this thing up. Now note that when you have multiple uh, authors here, for example, this resource has two authors, you put them on separate lines, and that's a little different from in LaTeX where you usually put them all in one author thing. Same thing with editors or anything else, but once you have this done, you'll pretty much be able to format any kind of um, document with refer. Now I should say in addition to this, notice, now remember if you're, if you're familiar with LaTeX, usually what you do is you tag like each reference has its own abstract name that you refer to it as. Like if I want to call this source here, I have to refer to it as Baker 88 in my document. Now I have copied these over to my refer document, but those are not actually necessary because refer is a little better because refer can mark, uh, it can match some keyword or tag you've given a, a, a reference, but it can also just find particular words that are in it. And if it uh, finds a close enough match, it will re re return the document you're looking for. I'll give an example of that in just a second. Let's go ahead and get into it actually. Let's, in fact, let's do an example of it right now. Uh, so here I have a graph document um, and in the last video we talked about how to compile graph documents. I just have one with the ms macro, so I have graph, ms, run it on this file, output it to PDF and put it in this file. That's all that's saying. Now in order to use refer, well let's actually run just refer first, just to see how it works. Now first, I'm gonna add in, let's say I wanna cite something uh, in this document. Let's say I just want some citation right here. Now the proper syntax for that is going to be a com uh, dot and then open bracket, and we're gonna end that command with dot close bracket. And uh, refer is going to read all the text between that as, it's, well it's really just gonna process all the text that it finds between that. Now, if I want to cite something, let's say I want to cite, um, let's say I want to cite Hamlet's Mill, which is a book I have over there, and I, I think I have it in my reference file. Um, I don't have to remember the tag I gave that file or the keyword I gave it. I can really just say, okay, Hamlet's Mill, that's probably a distinct enough title that uh, it's going to find that. Now, let's run refer first and see what it does. Um, I'm going to make it a little bigger here. 
Now if I run refer, now how I'm going to do it is I'm going to give it the uh, P option and I'm going to select my bibliography file so it knows what bibliography file to look at. And then I'm going to pick my file here and I'm just going to run just refer and to show you what it, what it does. What it does is it outputs the, the same document we inputted except for this stuff that's between the brackets. This has been replaced with that the information of that source we're looking for. And it looks like we have the right one. So great, that's what we want. Now in practice, what you're gonna do with this is that you are going to pipe it into Groff. So I'm gonna pipe it into Groff. And I'm gonna say again, we're using the MS macros. And say again, I'm going to put that in the PDF. And that is going to be example.pdf. So now I'm gonna run this. And you'll see, uh, it's a little subtle because my font is small, but I'll zoom in a little. You'll see we now have a little footnote here. And if I scroll down, you'll see that the reference has now been properly formatted. Everything's, you know, the title is italics and stuff like that. Everything is nice in the bottom of the page. So uh, that's what we expect. Again, we don't have to write any of that stuff out. In fact, you don't even have to remember the keyword like you do, you do in LaTeX. All you have to do is just do that and your references are in there. Now let's talk about customizing this because you might not necessarily want uh, footnotes uh, or something else. Now refer has a couple different options you can give it. Um, now you can of course, I'm gonna show you a couple of the ones that I use. Actually, let me pull up the, the command that I use in my uh, compiler script here. You'll see I give it a couple options here. Uh, P, S, and E. Let me, let me, I should probably just go ahead and show you what that does. If I give it capital S, for example, what that's going to do is uh, change the label used here. That is, if I don't want to use a footnote, um, this will present it as the author name and the year. Now, this is a label. Now, what the label means is it's actually going to label this footnote down here as that as well. Now, that I find a little strange, um, but it's easy, easy enough to get rid of. Uh, I should also say, oh, yeah, one other thing. As I said, I give it the capital P option as well. You'll notice that the exclamation point here is right before the reference. And sometimes you really want the reference to be inside of the sentence. I mean, in most style guides. So if you give it capital P, it is going to uh, move it over there. Um, another thing, I don't necessarily like uh, footnotes. I like having rolling bibliographies. So one thing I can do is give it the E option. And what that, the E basically means accumulate if you look at the, the uh, references. And what accumulate does is instead of putting everything immediately down in the footnotes, it just keeps uh, accumulating all the references you cite and then puts them in uh, a basically a references section at the end of the document. Now this is more, uh, this is basic custom uh, customizability, but there are other commands that you can give it to give it more, I guess, fine grain, grain details. So uh, let's say I want to, well, most of these options, I should go ahead and say, um, at least on GNU Groff, not necessarily the original trough, but uh, you can give them additional options up here. So if you put in R1 and in that uh, sequence with R2, in between that, you can put extra options. Uh, you can replicate some of the behavior that we had with these options here. But one thing uh, I think I noted just a second ago is I don't really like the labels uh, being down here in the references. So one thing you can give it is uh, no label in reference. I think that's it. Let me check. Did that work? Oh no, that's, that's not what I meant to, wait. It's not what I meant it to do. Sorry, I just lost myself for a second. Yeah, um, I forgot. Sometimes when you give it extra options in here, it'll overwrite the stuff you give it on the command line. So if I want this reference to still be in its own uh, references section, you have to manually uh, uh, specify accumulate in the document. So I'm gonna do that as well. And that's only if you have one of these um, uh, code areas where you say uh, additional settings. Now the other thing is I, I put these up here at the top of the document. That's sort of arbitrary. As long as they're before the uh, brackets here, uh, it's not gonna matter where they're gonna be. Now the other thing is you can of course specify different rules for different bra areas of brackets. Like let's say you want uh, uh, you know, one chapter or one section to for all the stuff to be in the footnotes. Uh, you could have another R1, R2 code area here where you uh, specify not to accumulate and specify, you know, tell them just to continually go to the, the uh, footnotes section or whatever. 
Um, additionally, now just to be clear, there is a lot of formatting stuff that's done automatically. Uh, so if I throw in more references here, although we have to pretty much use, I think you have to use only one reference per bracket. Um, if we do put in, let's say we put in uh, you know, Chomsky, we'll just put in Chomsky whatever and see what it does actually because I obviously have multiple Chomsky things so um, it will put in uh, oh actually this illustrates two things so it'll put in the reference but notice also oh I should show you I meant to show you without the accumulate tag uh, it will also automatically format the format here so that instead of having them in separate parentheses they're all uh, unified under the same parentheses and separated by a semicolon. You can change that format if you want. If you want them to be separated by comma or put in brackets, just check the manual for that. Now, I will. in addition to that, um, you'll see that I got this little warning here, and it says multiple matches for Chomsky. And that is because in my reference file, there are a whole bunch of stuff that have the sequence Chomsky in it. So if I want one particular one, in order to be safe, I should specify more of the title or more of other bibliographical data. So let's say I want uh, Chomsky's thing on three factors and language, whatever it is. Um, so I'll just recompile that and you'll see that it's now Chomsky 2005 and that is three factors and language design. That's the one I want, okay? So it's pretty manipulatable, and the error it gives you here is not fatal. That can be good and that can be bad, depending on what you're looking for. Um, but just be aware of that as well. Now, I want to give you one more little use case that I think is pretty useful. Again, it, it's in the manual, but I just want to show you that it's there. And that is the list function. Now, again, you can accumulate references, and by default, they're all going to go at the very bottom in a separate reference section. Um, but if we want, let's say we want uh, we want different chapters or different headings, and at the end of those, we want all the references from those sections to be there with their own chapter. So you don't have to go all the way to the end of the document or something like that. That's something that people want all the time. So let's uh, well, first off, let's turn on accumulate by default. And what we're going to do here is first, well, let's go ahead and recompile this. Um, so now we have our references all here at the very end here. Um, but one, let's say we add another section. Okay, so it's going to say new header and uh, a new section. A new section. A new section. And here's another paragraph. Okay. Um, so, and of course, if we recompile this, the references are still going to be at the very end. Now, what we can do is we can. Uh, start another little bracketed off area and we can just type in list between two dollar signs and if we do that and recompile it you'll see that what happens is all of these references that were accumulated up until that point print out whenever you type in list and if we add in uh, some other let's add in another reference um, let's say uh, thinking fast and slow which I have on my desk here which I think I have in my, um, yeah, I do have it on my bibliography file. So here you'll see that this reference is going to, since you know it, it is accumulated, it's just going to end up at the very end, uh, unless we type in a print command. But these references, or not a print command, a, a list command, these references, since we have this list function here, uh, they print out where we put that function. Uh, so that is how you can get things like, and of course you can you can simplify this by doing macros for for something else like that. But this is generally how you can get that kind of functionality. Now I have refer is a bear, very big place. Uh, check the documentation for refer. Check other resources on refer. There are lots of ways to change. You know what kind of what the labels look like. Uh, where they appear, what they do, all of this detail. I'm not going to give you it all here, but I hope this has given you a good enough view of it. And this is going to be, additionally, refer is, I guess, a preview to other preprocessors in Groff. Notice what we're doing. If you remember what happened when we originally ran the Groff command, all it does is it modifies the text stream of the document, replacing particular sequences which uh, with new data that a graph can read. 
And this is what other preprocessors are going to do as well. For example, there is PIC for making diagrams. There is uh, EQN for making equations, similar to LaTeX math mode. Uh, I'm going to do a video on that. I might do a video on other ones as well. But all of them work in the same way. That is, they just modify certain select portions of the stream uh, and send them off to Graph for Graph to do whatever it needs to do. And that's one of the reasons this is such an efficient program. It's not, it's not like LaTeX where it's creating a gajillion build files and doing all this really hardcore stuff. It's just modifying a text stream that eventually is going to end up as a postscript or a PDF file. So anyway, so that's about it. I hope you learned something and I'll see you guys uh, next time.